been described in six words that make it real when you try to explain it all. Real cars, real drivers, real fun. It's the year one experience. And if you're looking for every cool thing you can experience with your hot rod, this is the place for you. I don't think there's another show like this going on anywhere in the country where there's this much stuff to do in your car. There's never been a bigger gathering of car people, good times, and most of all, vehicles in motion, making their way onto the tracks, as well as running like pros at very high speeds. It's it the is. most fun you can have in a car with your clothes on. This is the greatest there is. And don't be shocked if you run into familiar gear-headed friends, because at this party, the only thing you can expect is the unexpected. It's the auto experience of a lifetime, where these owners are driven to have their cars driven. You see my car on a trailer, please dial 911 because it's been stolen. This is Rides. It's a three day event where you get to be a car pro, featuring every ride related activity known to man. It's kind of an ultimate automotive experience for the family wet autocross, dry autocross, hot laps around Road Atlanta, riding in Panos, race cars around Road Atlanta. 19 miles north of here, Atlanta Dragway, you got killer racing going on, show and shine. The year one cup will be given out. Chip Foose will be in town. Chris Jacobs from Overhaul and signing autographs. It's just an awesome place to do a show. Great weather. Look forward to next year already. It's the annual year one experience in Brazelton, Georgia, where car competition looms big. Two rides in a grudge match this year are a pair of blue Mustangs. Muscle Car Giant's unique performance built that white striped Shelby, and it is a car made to race. This blue beast was recreated by that other muscle car titan, Year One. And like any host of a hard driving car party, they're not giving the guests any slack, playing on their home field as they set out to show Unique who's boss. Well, don't tell this GT350 SR that she's not the boss. It has a Shelby-tuned 331 cubic inch V8 power plant featuring 410 horsepower geared up to a five-speed tranny. But before that battle of the blues, we'll find the best quarter mile time, racing at the famous Atlanta Dragway. And don't forget the competition to do the best burnout. And it's also displayed rides competing in car shows with many different classes. Back in motion, you'll test your car on the autocross, even if it's a gem most people would visit in a museum rather than drive. A ride like this vintage Cobra, a classic owned by a guy who clearly believes that a car, no matter how rare, is meant to be driven. At this event, you can run on Road Atlanta, where schooling takes place, classes showing you how to race like a pro. Everyone's doing it, even a guy who needs no tutoring when the subject is cool cars. Special guest Chip Foose will go wild in a Panos race car. And that's just a little of what's going on here. Variety is what it's all about here. It's why there are many different classes when it comes to the event's car show competitions. personalized rides is growing, thus the ever-increasing volume of drivers, cars, and most of all, variety. Everybody's different. Um, you know, some guys are hardcore racers, some guys are pure concourse type restoration guys. They don't want to see anything but stock. I'm a fan of the late, uh, you know, 60s, early 70s muscle cars or whatever, the, you know, when you could tell a car was a car. But um, we appreciate them all and, you know, cater to all of them. Whether a guy's got a rust bucket, he's just running down the track and just absolutely abusing. Or guys that, you know, bring the cars in um, and, you know, the undercarriage of their cars is, looks better than the paint job on the top side of my car. With so many classes competing for so many prizes, it might be tough to know just what award goes to what car here at the event. But if there's one thing to watch for, it's that granddaddy of the show, the Year One Cup. To be eligible, you need a car falling into those muscled up eras year one parts is known for. Now some of these entries don't just have brand, model, and year labels, they also have names. This is Rafe, this is what I named him, it's Ram Air Inducted Firebird. So it's actually functional Ram Air hood there. And uh, had, uh, had the car since I was 15. I hate to say like so many third gen Firebird owners, Knight Rider came along and I was at that age that I saw the car and I said, you know, I gotta have one of those. <laughs> Many people here at one time or another have said, I gotta have one of those. 
68 Corvette. 68 Corvette. 68 Corvette over here, 327, 350 horse, all match number. Then we gotta take a look at the 41 Ford over here now, no, guys. No, no. Right, yes, sir. Year one's all about the muscle car. They don't have anything for Corvettes or most of these old Ford products, but uh, they're pretty cool cars, right? For most of these folks, their ride is a permanent member of the family, especially when family members are attached at the earliest of ages. He loves cars. I mean, he loves them. I mean, my husband works on them, and he's out there with him in it all the time working on them. He does not like doing nothing but with cars. It's a 1962 Chevy Impala. Um, it started life as just a regular Impala, but we converted it to a super sport. You know, all these late model cars, you know, you can sort of put up at a red light and you see another car just like it, but something like this, you just don't see very many of. And you don't see many cars here that aren't on the move and ready for action. So with that in mind, it's off to the racetrack. This event takes car gatherings to an active level. And today, they'll run them hard on the world famous Road Atlanta. So here at the event, you can push it big on a world class track. And to the surprise of many, you'll do it in a totally safe environment. You get to come out in your car, any car that may be, and you go get behind a professional driver on Road Atlanta and you follow it. And depending on your skills and what type of car you're in will kind of dictate the pace that the pace car will go. He won't go as fast as he can because he doesn't want us as an amateur to do something stupid and lose it. So for now, it's a break from this region as we zoom up the road where the competition is a bit more fierce. And at the start of it all, side by side. Here at the Atlanta Dragway, every driver arrives determined to win. In years past, I've been to so many car shows where you sit and watch people sit by their car and, you know, okay, that's great. It's, it's wonderful entertainment. There's nothing wrong with it. And that's why I offer it at my show too, for people that want to do that. But so many other folks want to go out and pound on that car in a legal environment where they don't normally go. And this offers them an opportunity to go to the drag strip and do it. It's mainly test and tune. If you put the track down with to just classes all the time, people don't get to really have fun with cars they don't normally race. This is a party of car people who take cool looks and high speed seriously. With that in mind, it's clear that everyone here is driven to compete. That includes two Mustangs who will duel it out later in a test of horsepower. Now, here at this friendly event, the spirit of competition is in the air whether the stakes are large or small. And that question of large or small also applies to the size of your vehicle as well. Classic. And that need to compete is there in that smoky burnout contest. As well as that top car show, the Year One Cup. No two ways about it, these folks came here to outdo each other. And sometimes, given the most unfortunate of circumstances, your stiffest competition can be about your own want to go faster than you're ready to go. The car is barbecued, but the owner escaped injury. I got to the big end of the track, and I popped, there's smoke, and it burst into flames. 
I sat there burning for a while. I just got out and I was yelling for the fire trucks to come over there, but it took a while for them to get there, so it burned pretty well. 98 SS, uh, it's got a cam, nitrous, uh, it's bolt-ons. Nothing special. Woo! Nothing special, he says, but it ran like a racer. With its last time, its best time. 10-6, the best it's ever ran, there you go. This is the kind of great attitude you find in the car culture here at this event. If you can walk away from it, if nobody was hurt after you pushed your ride like a pro, hey, all in all, it's not a bad day. The run for the money. Sometimes the problem is too much power in a big old car. The solution? Well, maybe you should drive a smaller car. I've got a black 67 Chevy 2. Built that one for my son for Christmas this year. That's a cool dad handing out cars for Christmas. And in this case, Santa might have left it in a stocking. It's a fun ride, but a risky one, especially if you play with a tough kid. So Trying to kill my boy! Go! <laughs> get down there and play right now. We've got big money in stake here. Hey, boy! Let's see a real race, okay? Hi. All right, do a real race this time. <laughs> Still gonna beat it. Oh, little man. His weight over horsepower. And he had that uh, nice year one hat turned around backwards to give him a little bit of that extra horsepower. All right. There you go, son. <laughs> you put that up, you'll need it later. Just run what you brung and hope you brought enough, and I didn't bring enough. <laughs> there you go, be a man, Joe. I'll be a, man. <laughs> a couple teams brung plenty. With the spirit of this event being competition, year one brung their blue Mustang, a rebuilt monster looking to take on anybody who has doubts about who's king of the hill here in Brazelton. Unique performance brung their ponies. Their Eleanor Super Snake from Gone in 60 Seconds, as well as their GT350 SR, the Shelby that's going to give Year One a run for their money. It's a big bad battle of the blues, and the pregame handicapping has begun. Our, our car really is, was built more for street driving, uh, just common, go fast on the road, straight racing. Um, a good cruiser, good feel for, for straight and, and, and cruising on the road. The, the unique cars are built for. Uh, actually track racing, going curves. And uh, so it's really interesting to see how the cars will dyno and what the power ratios are to the cars. Yeah, he had all the advantage on the road course, see? He set up road course. Yeah, I'm we're setting not. up a little stiff, see? So maybe we'll have the advantage on the dyno. Who knows? <laughs> uh, I think you will with that blower. For some, there's no truer test of car power than stats from a dyno. After all, you take away drivers, roads, handling, and all the external elements found in typical driving. Of course, for those reasons, you can win on the dyno but lose on the track. Nobody realizes that better than Kevin King, a guy who knows every number associated with the year one rides. Usually it's around 500 to rear wheel when we dyno it, so it should be somewhere in the ballpark. We'll see. Fun. You know how it is when you put a crowd in front of you, it tends to be less than you normally get. <laughs> 553. Not bad. Strong pool. We know it's got more, but we'll settle for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So as the unique performance Mustang gets ready to spar, we check in with hobbyist and family man Mike Lauer, a guest who wants to see what his car can do on the dyno. You might have a problem with the gears. It's got a 256 rear end in it still. My new one wasn't done in time to come out here. And uh, I've had it up to 130 and I was only turning four grand. We might run out of speed before we reach the, uh, the peak power. This is my daughter Amanda. She's got a Chevelle in the garage in a thousand pieces. <laughs> Mike's a car guy raising a car family, and you can tell he's the sort of builder who will always be making his ride better with every new installation. That's pretty disappointing. 276 watch 
We're gonna get those manifolds off and get some headers on it though. Get a bigger exhaust. The motor's not breathing. And shouldn't a student like Amanda drive an economy compact instead of an old muscle car? No way. She wouldn't be able to park it at my house. As for the team from Unique, they're eager to see how their car does up against Year One's Mustang, already making plans for this evening. I'd like to go ahead and drag race it tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we'll blow it up, let's blow it up on the track. <laughs> The results are in. It's year one versus unique performance. 425 at the wheel. Not bad for just a normally aspirated car. For an old 65. <laughs> part one of this competition is over, and part two is on its way, with both cars going where it matters most, the racetrack. Meanwhile, another big battle is about to begin. That wild war of tread, smoke, and volume, the burnout contest. Hook them up for the crowd. Let's get up, let's get the burnout contest rolling. Reset a BF Goodrich tire for that A number one burnout. It's been called a burn off, where they burn a lot of rubber and the tires go poof, and then and that's it. And that's, yeah. But hey, don't take a clown's word for it. Check it out yourself. <laughs> It's been a specialty in Brazelton for decades, the burnout, that roar of rebellion now organized into a competitive event. And these guys came to compete. Tonight, everybody tries to make it into the finals. Later, the field will narrow down to a few. It's soon down to three wheel spinners who will battle it out tomorrow. Is this the area for the burnout? Thank you. Everyone's here to see the top three from last night. First up is the owner of a Firebird who knows how to give it the gas and stay in one place. And what burnout contest would be complete without a Camaro? What's up next? Well, like the man said, run what you brung. So what was brung? and now it's time to decide who came to merely do burnouts and who came to win. And winning is also on the minds of those here going for that top car show prize, the year one cup. When she bought it, nothing worked. I've got a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in that car. That's the exciting part, taking something that's 40 years old almost and putting it all back in the original shape. My uh, mother brought it uh, to me at school. Believe it or not, on my 15th birthday, I get this page. Shannon, please meet your parents. And I go outside, and there's a big bow with the T-tops out on the car, just sitting there, and they're waving to me. Look, look, look what we found. When we were younger, uh, nobody had Mopars, but we were always the fastest. And um, you see Fords, Mustangs, and Chevrolet Camaros everywhere, but you can't find these. The judges of the burnout contest at the year one experience can't pick a winner, so they're letting the crowd decide. It's a risky move, since the quality of a burnout is often all in the eye and ear of the beholder. The crowd has spoken, and what do you know? A cool firebird and a trick Camaro beat by this guy. And the prize? 
a new set of tires, which is good because, man, is he going to need them now. The tires actually get so hot that it disintegrates the, the pavement. It digs down into it. Temp you can't hold the temperature. I could have bet my life that I didn't think that truck would do that. But I saw him do it on my bridge up there before he came oh, down. Busted! Busted! As long as it isn't on the racetrack, we're okay. <laughs> From burnouts to beauties, there's also top auto shows going on here at this car party, and event chairman Kevin King asked yours truly to be a judge, starting with rides near to my heart. I've said it before, and you know I'm going to say it again. I love Mopar. As you can see, this beautiful rainbow is a lineup of fabulous Mopars from the appropriate era, and we're going to go check them out. Gorgeous. Right here, we got a 70 Challenger RT. It's one of the prime examples of Mopar, e-body, obviously very hot right now. These cars are going for top, top dollars. It's a really clean, clean example. You can see this is a beautiful restoration. Very nice, pretty stock interior. It's got an aftermarket stereo in it, but the uh, seat steering wheel, the dash is all correct, all very clean. It's a top of the line resto right here. Definitely consider this for the vote. Mopar fans know that it's never a crime to explain it to those poor few who still don't get it. Mopar stands for all the great cars from Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler, and legend claims that the term came from the words motor and parts. I got a 1968 roll runner, and uh, my nephew completely restored it for me. I just love them, man. They're real nice. It's a 71 Dodge Challenger 446 pack. Originally, it was a 318 car. Um, the shaker hood is original factory shaker, but not to this car. To muscle car fiends, the Mopars of the Super 70s are really special cars. And standing out in a row of way special cars, I think I found my winner. OK, now we're talking 1970 Plymouth Cuda AAR. Now, this car is a counterpart of the uh, Challenger TA. And um, what these cars were designed to do is race in the uh, SCCA circuit. So they had to put out a certain amount of cars to the public to qualify them for the racing circuit. This is a beautiful restoration job. These cars came with a 340 with the six pack. Another thing that designates this car is the Cuda, and you can always tell if it's a fake or not. It's got to have the side pipes coming out in front of the rear wheel. Plum crazy, it's got the correct stripes. Obviously this guy put a lot of time and effort into the restoration of this car. In my opinion, this right here is my pick for top car. Perhaps nothing says I love hot rods like the open class competition here at this event. And it's hot rods that bring people together because you don't create customs like these so you can stare at them alone. When you put this event together with all the work that went into these rides, you have something of an answer. In answer to that special question, just what is it about hot rods? Well, from the looks of things, it's about being an individual. Because no matter how cool the other guy's car is, it can't represent you like your car. Even if you're paying homage to someone else's ride. Of course, around here, if you want to get the goat of a gearhead, you'll create a great car you're too in love with to drive. If that's your story, don't tell any of these people. Beat on it pretty hard. Uh, that's what I built it for, is to show and to play with. If I can't play with it, I don't want it. I think any vehicle that's built should be driven, but just to, because it's just good for the sport, and um, you know, that's what cars are made for, to be driven. I cruise in it some, and then I kick it, and really enjoy it. We're gonna drive it to California. We're gonna hook a trailer to it and hit the road. Sitting here behind a car isn't any fun to me. Put the hand plumb down in the dash on the car the first day it was out of the dealership. Built pretty much for a uh, highway, riding and driving. If you see my car on a trailer, please dial 911 because it's been stolen. Drive it every day to work, 30 miles back and forth. I drive it hard. Riding on Sunday afternoons and, and just enjoy the, the feeling of the car and the windows down. Had it out on the track, past few days driving it. They're no good sitting in the garage. My name is Ruby the Clown. It's R U B Y. 
T H E C L O W N N. <laughs> Some more or less. I'm not technically a racer. I'm a little bit on the slow side. This place gives everyone opportunity to uh, to go around the track. They're not actually getting anywhere. They're just going around and around. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, they're, they're, they're in such a hurry, too. They're always in such a hurry. I just like playing with the kids. They come here and I give them balloons and face paint, and we just have a really good time. That's the whole thing. Ruby's brighter than he looks, proven by his want to make kids feel welcome here. In fact, according to Kevin King, if anything outranks cars at this event, it's family. The most important factor for our car show is the family environment. We bring the kids out, we hang out, we show them cars, we teach them about our hobby, and more importantly is we spend time with our kids. The kids of today are growing up on computers and, and looking at screens and looking at Game Boys and whatever else, and they're not getting any outdoor time. When you see a child at a show with their dad, it's, it's really cool because they're getting it. Obviously, the message that we're sending out is that you should bring your kids. Don't dump them off on the family, mom, babysitter, whatever. Take them with you. We give them stuff to do. So bring them out there, show them some cars, and have some fun, and include your children in this situation. And if someone in the family wants a break from cars, well, Kevin has that part organized as well. We set up situations where people can be sh shuttled to the mall or to a restaurant for that matter, and they can go do something that does interest them while their spouse or friend is out here having fun at the show. The man has figured out everything. Hey, he's not the boss for nothing. <laughs> Mustang Wars Part Two. Tonight there's a little grudge racing to happen. Some of the guys have been talking smack. So have a little fun and see what we can do. Whoever can put it on the ground, that's gonna be the thing. Right. So much torque in both these cars, whoever can get it stick. So. Ours is sitting at 3,200. About, about the same. Probably about the same. Pretty close on weight wise. Racing is a given with a unique performance ride, but horsepower can make up for a lot. That's something they know all about at year one. In fact, they're also aware that speed often erases early mistakes. Yeah, it's a fast car, but is it any match for that GT350 SR? Only time will tell. And now, that time is seconds away, where we'll settle the score of the blue Mustangs between unique performance and year one. This ought to be good. It's a contest requiring more than a dyno challenge. Part by part, it's a top Shelby-tuned race machine. But that doesn't make it invincible or even accident-proof. Competition is one thing before the race and another thing during. You can want to win all you want, but that doesn't always have a lot to do with how you handle it when the heat is really on. Two fast Mustangs race on the straightaway, and the driver in one of those rides had better do some quick thinking. It's an attempt to avoid true disaster as the rivalry between Unique Performance and Year One leads to a showdown starring top cars made by each company. They're running their grudges out at the Year One Experience in Brazelton, Georgia. And as anyone can see, in both standard speed and slow speed play, it's clear that the car from Unique pulled out of one very scary problem in its own unique and professional fashion. It was a close call, and the winner of the race, the Year One Mustang. Hours later, Unique gets a rematch. And as both teams get their cars to the starting line and ready for battle, one thing is certain. Unique performance came back to perform. It's a fast car from Unique, but year one has extra horsepower as well as home field advantage. Whatever the case, year one wins. Later, these guys get together. They have a lot to talk about. And the only one who's blue in the year one camp is the car. Hey, you wanted an 11 second run, didn't you? That's what you got. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah, huh? okay. <laughs> fun, huh? Uh, I mean, a lot of fun, there, man. Yeah, man, it's a lot of I fun. Heard, I heard you about Ben Paul. Oh, man. That one, I, one run I really hooked up good on. 
I had to, when I shifted the second, it just it went right up against yeah, the wall. We'll check our had to back at it. That, that last run, that was, I was disappointed in that run. It felt better than what it was. They're known for selling car parts, but when year one takes the time to build a ride, look out. And if you want to start setting speed records, have we got a school for you. That was so sweet. I can't get, that's better. That's awesome. <laughs> Great. You get in with a professional driver in a Panos racing car, they go really fast and show you how a professional driver would drive this course, and they kind of scare you a little bit. Today we'll race with a guy who knows all about cars, even cars that haven't been built yet. And most people know if it isn't built yet, he'll probably build it after he sketches it. This will be drawn cars. <laughs> Chip Foos is here to have fun, but Kevin has another plan. We're gonna go see if we can scare Foos. Is that the look or what? <laughs> <laughs> All I need is a uh, Vespa. They're putting me on the wrong side, but I'm still gonna enjoy it. He's gonna enjoy it more once he's driving, because don't let the drawing and the creativity fool you. Chip Foos is a madman behind the wheel. All right, we're gonna switch now. Before he was a top designer, he was a kid obsessed with every kind of car. Let's face it, if it has an engine and moves, Foose will teach you. He's a great teacher. If you get the correct process down for any corner that you drive up to in any day life or on a racetrack, and you're always going through the same thing, and you make it kind of natural, yeah. then you can, come on to, you can get onto a racetrack and just go for it. Well, I know that I was coming into corners, and I know Bo was, Bo was going like this, which meant slow up before I was wanting to. Yeah, in the beginning there was a lot more <laughs> slow down than there was speed up, and then yeah. at the end there was more speed up than there was slow down. So that's good, that means progress. Basically, I know that he didn't want me to drive deep into the corners because he doesn't know my ability. And yeah, I don't know real, <laughs> I don't really know my ability either, but uh, just those few little items that he told me there in the end, it'd be fun to go back out and uh, tear it up again. For those in the car world like Kevin King, a guy like Chip is a rare and special friend. Chip Foose is, is incredibly talented and I think humble and, and approachable and he spends so much time and is dedicated to the consumer, went out in the public's eye and that's what separates him from everybody else. With a guy like Foose, you know, number one, he's in California typically doing his shows and, and most of it's done on the West Coast. So here we are in Georgia and we have a car that we're building inside our shop and we have this world-class designer in our shop. And of course, all of our shop guys are there and we're just kind of in awe. I mean, the guy just, the things that we've been standing there looking at, thinking about we would like to do or just can't come up with the right thing that we're looking for and boom, he walks over and starts putting tape on the car and mocking things up and cutting cardboard and you name it and bam, there's an idea and we're like, that's exactly what we were looking for. Many come to this event to take part in a little autocross, with or without the H2O. We have the wet autocross and the dry autocross. At the wet autocross, the customer can drive through, slide all over the place with an instructor in the car telling them how to save the car, what to do when it gets loose. And then the, you can also go on a similar setup on a dry autocross without an instructor, and you run it as fast as you can. You run it fast until you drift out of control. Of course, for many, that's when the good times start. It's very great. fun. A lot different than you think. You're just not used to how much the car is going to oversteer and get away from you. But you have a lot of things to do to try to correct them. Yeah. It's handling versus acceleration on the autocross track, and even the driver of a Royal Classic can never have too much practice when it comes to making the ride into a racer. And could there possibly be a bigger Royal Classic than this legend? Try to comprehend a find this rare being driven today on a racetrack as though time stood still and the car is as young as ever. We're seeing it thanks to Bill Farmer, a man who's been rebuilding the ride for 25 years. The story started in 1980 when Bill heard of a widow who was selling her late husband's Cobra. It all sounds too good to be true. It was almost a perfect story about uh, a Cobra in a chicken coop and you get it for $500 other than she knew exactly what it was worth. Totally disassembled, 
Um, and then I have just spent the past 25 years uh, putting it back the way I feel like he would have finished it. Without a doubt, that's one collectible car. And just what is the value of such a rare ride? A similar car sold, I don't know, maybe um, six months ago for 560 something, 560 something K. Given those numbers, it makes it all the more amazing that Bill doesn't merely drive the car, he also races it. Then again, that's what this event is all about. I built an A production race car, and uh, that's, uh, that's what I like to do with it. When I get too old to drive it, I'll think about putting it in a museum. Bill's a racer, a role many are practicing here at this event, with a lot of high speed directly on the way. And directly on the way as in right now, more contenders going after that big prize for show cars, the year one cup. Uh, the Chevelles are just, uh, of course, especially 70s, are just my favorite. It's something that's real fun for both Francis, my wife, and I. Uh, she enjoys about as much as I do. The car was actually built for my father-in-law. His name was Randy Cowan. Uh, we lost him, unfortunately, back in 2002. And we put this car as a rolling tribute to him. Yeah, my dream car from the time I was 14 years old was a 69 Camaro. And uh, 20 years later, uh, I was able to buy one. So. <laughs> At Road Atlanta, it's track day. And once again, school's in session for those determined students who want to get their degree in driving real fast. You go through a one-hour course, first in orientation, then a one-hour course on sort of getting some skills on how to save cars in certain situations in driving on a road course or on main roads, period. And then after you go through that one-hour class, you then get to go out on the track in your car at your own pace, pretty much. Now, they have a pace car, but he flies. It's real hard to keep up with him. And you also get to do some passing. Imagine what it takes to master a road that's free of lanes, traffic signals, or any driver who's cool about letting you go ahead of them. All that is what they teach here in the classrooms. A very common question that I get every day when I do these programs is, how fast can you go out there? And that's a funny question. He's laughing at it. I laugh at it every day. It's very difficult to answer because a track like this, there's spots out there that you can go 140 miles per hour and not even feel like it. And then there's spots that you can go 40 miles an hour and scare the hell out of yourself. I'm sure for all the stuff that I've seen cruising around here the last few days, everybody's got plenty of horsepower and torque. And the more abruptly you come off the brakes and start to hit the gas, you're either going to pick up the nose of the car and the car's going to understeer, or you're going to light up the rear tires and have an oversteer. So that transition as you let off the brakes and start to hit the gas is extremely important. There's a point that you're going to brake for the turn. There's a point that you're going to turn. And the point right in the middle is where you want to do your downshift. Put the clutch in, move the shifter, let the clutch out. Try to do it in a straight line, because if you get too, too far up to the turn-in point or past it, and you're trying to do that downshift afterwards, and everything's not perfectly smooth, then it could kind of lock up the rear tires and create problems that you really don't need to know about or deal with at this stage. It's non-racing civilians learning how to tear it up on the track here at the Year One Experience. And before hitting the asphalt with their rides, the participants cruise along with an instructor to get familiar with the course. They also get driving tips from accomplished racers, pros like an actual protege of the one and only Carol Shelby. My first instructor, Riverside, 1966. That was a while ago. They were just inventing the wheel, weren't they? Probably the most important thing, just as big picture, is to think ahead of the car. If you're wondering what you're gonna do when you crest this hill, you're behind the car. If you know when you crest this hill, you're gonna hit the brakes and prepare for turn 10, that's what you need to be thinking. If you find you're carrying too much speed and this applies to any turn, if you're running out of room, do not pinch off the exit. You can drive with two wheels in the grass to Egypt. It doesn't matter. You pinch off that exit, it's gonna stuff you right to the inside wall. Anything that I can tell you that makes the car feel like it's going slower is really just giving you confidence that you can go faster. There's a double-edged sword there, but anyways, think ahead of the car. It's probably the best thing I could leave you with before you, before you get in. If you do that clubby thing of, oh, did you get the apex? Look down for the apex. At 120 mile an hour, you're looking down for an apex. If you turn in early, by the time you look up, you're gonna be out of road. My little method is, I believe, to turn the car in properly. If I do turn in early and I'm looking for the exit, 
I found out about it about 50 feet sooner. I can do something about it. I might not do the turn perfectly, but I won't be in the fence. I'll get to come around and perfect it. So this is a part that I talked about. Everybody's so gung-ho on like going as fast as you can, and that's great. But here you could be going 140, and it doesn't really matter. Because what's the most common mistake, especially in high-speed turns? That's where people get caught off guard. Your natural tendency 99 out of 100 times is going to be to turn in too early. If I run over a curb in this, you can run over it in your car. If I don't run over it in this, don't run over it in your car. This is almost like one straightaway right into turn one. Right under the yellow at the bridge. Don't unwind your hands. You'll be in the grass. I'll give you my 99.9% .9 guarantee that you're not going to crash if you stay on line because the line never, never leaves the track. Can we get it and ride it? 99.9, <laughs> absolutely. If you run out of road here, say, oh my god, it's not a beggy. You can do that at 140 miles an hour. Where people run into problems is they talk to God and tug the wheel. Bad deal. <laughs> All right, guys, be safe. Just get in your cars, helmets on, buckle up. Make sure your uh, probably the most important thing is that your floor mats are out of the way, and you can pull up to the front of the line, and we'll get you grouped up ready to go. OK, there's going to be a last-minute safety inspection before heading out onto the track. With the brass from the event and the racetrack giving all the rides a once-over, making sure nothing will fall off these cars as they strive to drive into triple digits. You checked your lug nuts yes. recently? Last night. And tire pressure? Yes. Last night? You may have lost quite a bit. With the cold weather, it drops. And some cars come with a few accessories. You gonna need that? Yeah, well, I have mine on the back stretch. You never know. We're gonna find out. The gentleman up ahead said that, you know, get a lot of stones flying, so uh, let's prevent some of the chips from the side of the car. I'm not convinced. I'll probably be tearing it off in about 10 minutes anyway. So now it's time to pull out of the pits, as these drivers start living their dream of having their ride on a professional racetrack. Remember, these participants had intense classroom instruction where they covered driving techniques, racing etiquette, and every aspect of this track in detail. But class might be back in session because it's now a trip to the pits to regroup and get new instructions. But in the corners, I'll start picking it up. But drive right, right in my trail. You just stay in line with the, the instructor. He's, he's got it right on. Just do what he says, and you find yourself learning how to drive pretty cool on a road course. Oh, man, it's a blast. It's, it's, it's the most fun you can have in a car with your clothes on. But it's, it's interesting. The instructor will take you along, and you think you're going fast, and then he'll pick it up a little faster, and then just before you know it, boom, he's gone. You're doing everything he told you, and he's still just leaving you in behind. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had one mechanical issue. No big deal. It was kind of expected. No big surprises. But nobody's hit anything yet, and I probably shouldn't have just said that. But we have one more session. We'll see how it goes. The drivers are now back in their rides as they follow the pace car. The pace car moderates the speed of things based on the skill shown in this particular group. Beginners can expect a moderate pace with increasing speeds as things progress. Of course, they've been warned that moderate to the driving instructor of a high-speed ride is pretty fast to everyone else. And when it comes to everyone else, well, everyone else here is having a blast. This is the greatest there is. Can't have any more fun than that. To see all these kind of cars doing that, too. Show some of these straight liners that uh, there's more to it than going a quarter mile. Oh, it's was, great, man. Great. great experience. Awesome. <laughs> Anytime you go around corners and you ride on that ragged edge, that's fun. Always fun. From fun to work, Carl will show us that one of the most difficult experiences of all is putting on the year one experience. Carl's an organizing dynamo, now taking a driving break. We're going to go take a little parade lap. They told us highway speeds, but basically uh, it's more like my highway speed. You're getting up there 100, 120 or so. Hey, we ready to go thrash on that Z a little bit, sir? Better. Thank you, Dad. All right, Dan. It's their sled, y'all. Like I say, he, he volunteered maybe to let me drive it, but he knows how I drive, so I think he just, just because I'm his boss, man, I think he was kind of working it a little bit. Well, let's see what all the chatter is about as Carl gets behind the wheel of the car with a lot of horsepower to play with. It's not that he's a bad driver. It's more that he's just a tad squirrely. 
Oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Did you seem to get squirrely as hell? <laughs> but hey, sometimes squirrely can be a whole lot of fun. Woo! We survived. Barely. Barely. I guess it's back to work, y'all. But that heart is still pumping, man. Incredible, nothing like it, the adrenaline rush. I forgot what speed will do for you. Eleven o'clock at the media center. You're gonna get all type of awards. Awards that are fun, prestigious, and desired. All leading up to the prize of the experience, the year one cup. The classes in the different divisions rack up nearly two dozen categories. It goes without saying that the year one cup goes to cool cars. And as many people know, cool cars can run in the family. Witness the most recent year one cup winner, enthusiast Punch Nichols. His Impala won, and man, did it deserve it. But here's the real news. A sleek Nova won two years before, belonging to Punch's son, Doug. Doug is still shocked. I was very much surprised when I even, even made it to the top three finalists uh, at that show. And then whenever they called my name out, I really, really couldn't believe I'd won the show. Doug gives credit to that other car guy in the family, his dad, who picks up the wrenches and lends Doug a hand. Me and him worked together on his project, and uh, then uh, me and uh, his mother built the 63. Punch and his wife bought the award-winning Impala back in its original showroom days, keeping it nicely preserved for quite a few years. We never even considered trading a car or selling it. We just uh, parked it in the garage, and we left it parked in there for, in the same garage for 24 years. Until 2002, when Punch and his wife restored the Chevy, and it sounds like the Mrs. and Punch punched a time clock in the garage. She put in 661 hours on the car, and uh, myself, I put in uh, 996, but I left out the park where my wife mowed grass while I worked on the car. Well, those are a couple past winners, and now it's time to see the finalists in this year's Grand Prize Derby, the contest where someone will take home the year one cup. The first finalist up for the award is Scott Whitman and his perfectly stunning classic era Chevrolet Camaro. Now comes finalist number two, Neil Reed driving in with an absolutely spectacular 1967 Chevy Nova. The third worthy finalist going for the cup is Michael Hobb with his 1974 Boss 302 edition of the Ford Mustang. And the winner, it looks like three winners, but only one will take home the year one cup. The big announcement is about to be made. And for those who worked hard to get this far, the tension is unbearable. The 2005 year one cup winner is Mr. Scott Whitman. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Let's give him a big round of applause. Runners up Neil Reed and Michael Hobb are also honored for making it into that exclusive circle known as the Big Three. And at the end of the day, any gearhead worth his weight in car magazines would have had a tough time choosing. When the selection included a Mustang like Michael's, a Nova like Neil's, and that Camaro of Scott's, the call was difficult. But in the end, it's hard to argue with the decision because a close look will tell you this smoking Chevy truly is the rightful winner of the year one cup. Come nightfall, it's a big event. Jet cars that make this time into fire time. But don't take our word for it. Let's ask someone who knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, jet cars will probably run close to 300 miles an hour. 300 miles an hour, along with enough flame to light up the Georgia sky. If you like it hot, check this out. And of course, as expected, the time on the run is beyond reason. But just when we think it can't be topped, we were wrong. A truly remarkable speed. And if there's any way to give the crowd even more, here it is. The year one experience takes that fire on the track 
and puts it high up in the sky. So as this explosive family-filled event comes to an end, just remember one thing. If you happen to see fire coming out of the back of your daily driver, stop the car and get out. It's probably not an indication that your ride will soon be setting speed records. We've been asking the question, discovering notions of our own, but when all is said and done, this is the place where the answer lies. So just what is it about hot rods? Well, after experiencing this event, we know that the only people with the right answers are those who don't even know there's a question. The sound of an American V8, <laughs> something to that. It's a rush, it's an adrenaline rush. It happens because uh, people that start with cars and their kids, just, it never gets out of their blood, it's speed. I've been around the guys that's in it, so, <laughs> so they kind of draw me toward it, because I like guys, so. Once it bites you, it's, it's kind of hard to let go of it. It's in your blood. It, uh, it doesn't go anywhere. It sticks around and it gets worse as you get older. We've always been into either street rods or muscle cars. Working on them as a father and son team, it made it a lot more enjoyable. You just grow up smelling the gas fumes, I guess. You know, 30 years old and ha haven't grown out of it, I think it's here to stay. <laughs> well, that gets in your blood early on and then just unfortunately lingers and stays with you all your natural damn life. So just what is it about hot rods? Clearly, if you have to ask, you're one of those people who is never gonna know.